At the end of every Pokemon game, there's always a champion, which is the supposed strongest trainer in the region that you have to beat to beat the game. But believe it or not, not all of these champions are created equal, and there's only one that truly towers above all the rest, and that is the blonde devil in black, Cynthia. Cynthia is the champion of the Sinnoh region and the undisputed strongest champion in any Pokemon game ever. And that's why I wanted to see what it would be like to be Cynthia. I wanted to see if I could follow in her footsteps to rise to the top and become the greatest champion of all time. So I decided to see if I could beat Pokemon Brilliant Diamond with hardcore Nuzlocke rules playing as Cynthia. If you don't know what a hardcore Nuzlocke is, at a high level, this is a self-imposed rule set designed to make beating the game extremely difficult. The specific rules are on the screen now, as well as down in the description if you're interested, but that's enough talk for now, let's get into the game. We kick off the run in our childhood home, where we live a happy normal life with our mom, but you know, something just isn't right, and at the ripe age of 12, we're struck with the bane of millennials everywhere wanderlust. So we grab our spaz neighbor Barry and head off on an adventure. The only problem is that our town is surrounded by tall grass that is infested with dangerous and feral Pokemon. Luckily, someone just left a briefcase full of free Pokemon out in the grass. All right, don't mind if I do. For this run, we're going to start off with Turtwig. And obviously, Cynthia doesn't have a Torterra on her team, but the reason we chose Turtwig is because I wanted Barry to have Infernape, which I believe to be the strongest of all three starters, which gives him the best team overall. After after fighting off our assailant Starlies and taking care of a few logistical things, we make a quick trek up to Jubilife City, where we can head just north of the city to get our first catch, a Budu, which we catch and nickname Buddy. And this thing turns out to have a modest nature, which is the absolute best nature for it, so this run is certainly starting on a high note. Oh, okay, so we got ourselves a good old fashioned dance off here, huh? Unfortunately, even with those killer moves and a modest nature, Budu is not strong enough for us to risk using it in the first fight with Barry. So we end up spending a ridiculous amount of time grinding up its friendship by just kind of running around now with its friendship maxed and my patience at an all time low, we level it up once and it evolves into Rosalia. With our newly evolved floral killing machine, we can finally take on Barry. We're a little worried about losing the run here, so we set up a leech seed, then proceed to set up max special attack with growth. This might be overkill, but it does allow us to finish off his Starly without much issue and take out his Chimchar in a few hits. With Barry out of our way, we head to Orberg City, which is home to the first gym. The gym leader here, Rourke, specializes in rock types. Since Rosalia is pretty fast for this point in the game and grass destroys rock, we handily sweep his team. One Absorb is more than enough to take out his Geodude, then he brings in his Onyx. This thing lives through an Absorb because of its ability Sturdy, but one more finishes it off on the next turn after a heal. Taking out Onyx is enough to level us up, and we learn the move Magical Leaf, which we use to one-shot his Ace of Rampardos. With the first badge in hand, we set off towards Eterna City. On the way, there's some trouble at the old Valley Windworks, so we make a quick stop there to take out the evil Interlopers. But before we do that, we find the second member of our team, a Shellos, which we catch and nickname Sheldon. From here, we quickly dispatch Mars and her Perugly, then head to Eterna City, where we take on the second gym leader, Gardenia. Now this is a pretty interesting fight, since we can only really use Rosalia because Shellos is a water type and will get destroyed by any of Gardenia's Pokemon. Luckily, her lead charm can't really do anything to us, so we get an opportunity to set up plus six special attack with growth. From here, it's an easy sweep of her team with Magical Leaf. Her Roserade does take a few hits, but nothing too crazy, and it goes down without much of an issue. With the gym defeated, we head to investigate some stolen Pokemon or something at the mysterious Team Galactic Tower. Before we can make our way in though, we have some kind of crazy out of body experience where we meet our future self and she gives us encouragement and guidance and even a few TMs. Oh wow. I really love what I've done with my hair too. Anyway, with our vision quest completed, we take care of the galactic problem and rescue Rad Rickshaw in the process. To repay us for this favor, he ends up giving us a free bike. As we're heading to Hearthome City, we have another very strange encounter. Because the human spirit is weak and incomplete, strife has spread. This world is being ruined by it. I find the state of things to be deplorable. Oh. Okay, dude, we did just meet. We bounce back from that awkward interaction and we head through Hearthome City, where we have a quick, easy battle with Barry, then meet up with our mom at the contest hall. She tells us that on the way here, someone on the side of the road just 
shoved this super spooky Pokemon into her hands, and she asks us to take it since it really creeps her out. So she trades us the third member of our team, a Spiritomb. We can't change the nickname since technically it isn't ours, so we're stuck with the very unfortunate but very spooky nickname of 149. Moving on, our next stop is Veilstone City, where we find the next gym. But before taking it on, we make a quick stop at the department store to grab some crazy strong TMs, and then we come across the clothing shop. Finally, we get a chance to get rid of these ridiculous pink clothes and get into something a little bit more suiting. Mmm, much better. Now, all that's left for us to do is take on the gym leader. The gym leader Maylene specializes in fighting types. The unfortunate thing here is that her highest level Pokemon is the same level as the next gym leader. So we have to make sure Rosalia doesn't over level. So we leave it in the box for this one because it's more useful in the next fight than it is here. But at least just before we hide into the fight, Sheldon evolves into a Gastrodon, which should help a little bit. For this fight, we do lead with Gastrodon against her meta type. You might be thinking that Spiritomb is a logical choice here since its ghost type makes it immune to fighting type moves. However, in the run right before this one, we led with Spiritomb and it leveled to 31 in the middle of the fight, which on its own is fine, but since we only have two gym badges, once it gets above level 30, it will no longer listen to us. Not wanting to leave anything up to chance, we lead with Gastrodon and use a couple bulldozers to take out the meta type. Then she sends in her Machoke, and this thing takes forever to go down, but the long and short of it is that we traded bulldozers for low sweeps and ultimately came out on top because Recover is broken in Nuzlocke. Finally, she sends in her Ace Lucario. We're comfortable staying in one turn against this thing to land a super effective bulldoze, but it goes for a bulk up, which puts our Gastrodon in threat of dying on the next turn. So we swapped to Spiritomb, which thankfully managed to just barely stay at level 30 with the experience share. Lucario uses a Drain Punch on the turn we swap in, which we're immune to, and the next turn it harshly lowers our defense with Screech, while we put it one shot away from going down with a misclicked payback. The next turn we take a Metal Claw, and we manage to amazingly hang on at just one HP and finish it off with a hex. With Maylene taken down, we start making our way to Pastoria City with our very disobedient prison of souls in tow. At this point in the game, there's not much standing in the way of us taking on the next gym leader, Crasher, so we head right in to challenge him. He specializes in water types, but two of his Pokemon do have Ice Fang, which makes them extremely dangerous for Rosalia. But it's our best answer for his team, so we have to lead with it against his Gyarados. Turn one, we hit the Gyarados with a Giga Drain, which we were hoping to do about half damage with it. Unfortunately, it ends up just above half health, then we just barely hang on after Tanky and Ice Fang. Luckily, our ability Poison Point procs, which leaves the Gyarados poisoned and puts it into range of going down to a Giga Drain on the following turn. It does, and then he sends in his Quagsire, which goes down to one 4x effective Giga Drain, and finally he sends in his Ace Floatzel. It outspeeds us and lands a very dangerous Ice Fang, but we manage to hang on and finish it off with a Giga Drain. With Crasher completely crushed, we head outside and commence a quick chase scene with the Team Galactic Grunt. But just as we're hot on his tail, Barry slams into us and demands another battle. We dispatch him and chase down the Galactic Grunt just before we have another one of those strange hallucinations. However, this time, instead of being helpful or encouraging, our future self just gives us a chore to do. After begrudgingly taking care of the aching Psyducks, our future self shows up again and assigns us yet another task. You know what? I'm really starting to resent this lady. But not wanting to be rude to ourselves, we take on the task which has us heading to Celestic Town to meet up with our old grandma and give her the charm that our future self told us to give to her. Jeez, this is getting confusing. Whatever. We do that thing and we have a nice visit with our grandma, then pick up a free pair of choice specs on our way out of town. From here, we head back to Hartham City where we can challenge the absentee gym leader herself, Fantina. Before the fight, we slap the choice specs on Buddy and we also teach it Shadow Ball. Her lead Drift Blim is no match for the choice specs boosted Shadow Ball and it goes down in one hit. Next up is her Gengar who does outspeed us and get a pretty decent chunk of damage with the Sludge Bomb, but it goes down to one Shadow Ball as well. Finally, she's down to just her Ace Miss Magus and we're pretty sure that we won't outspeed it, so we swap in Spiritomb. It goes for Phantom Force on the turn we swap, so the next turn we go for a super effective payback, which is more than able to finish this thing off in one hit. As we're exiting the gym, we have yet another vision of our future self, and at this point, I'm starting to get really worried about our mental health. Anyway, this time we are helpful and give ourselves some tips on where to go next. From here, we head back to Jubilife City, surf across to Cantalive City, and then take a boat to the Iron Island. After fighting through the cave here with this kind stranger, he gives us a Realu egg, which will be our next team member once it finally happens. 
hatches. Also, at the end of this cave, we grab this shiny stone, which we use to evolve Buddy into a Roserade. After running around a bunch, our egg finally decides to hatch into a Realu, which we nicknamed Luca. From here, we begin the nice long friendship grind to get this thing to evolve into a Lucario, which does. Then we head in to challenge the next gym leader, Byron, who specializes in steel types. Fortunately for us, his team really just lacks offense. Knowing that, we lead with our Spear Tomb against his Bronzer, which we take out with a Shadow Ball on the first turn. Next up is his Steelix, who goes down to two Shadow Balls, but does manage to set up a Sandstorm in the process. From here, he's down to just his Ace Bastiodon. We trade a couple Shadow Balls for Flash Cannons, but eventually Spear Tomb gets too low, and we have to swap in Sheldon, who takes it out with a 4x effective Earth Power. Now that we've beaten the 6th gym, we have access to Strength, which allows us to access our second to last team member, Feebas, which exclusively spawns in very rare spots in the lake in Mount Coronet. But right as we're headed into the start the grind of fishing it up, we get a call from our mom. Turns out, she won the ring toss at the Seno Regional Fair, and so they gave her a Feebas as the grand prize. She doesn't know how to take care of a fish, and so she asks us to take it off her hands, which of course we do. Then we make a bunch of cakes out of berries and feed them to it until it's so beautiful that it evolves into a melodic. As we head back to Cantalive City to meet up with the professor, Lucas, and Barry, there's a huge earthquake or something and a bunch of evil stuff goes down, but thankfully all the members of Team Galactic are so incompetent that we put a stop to it pretty much single-handedly. Then we head up to take on the seventh gym leader, Candace. Oh, am I really gonna have to solve this ice puzzle? Oh. Nice, that was easy. Candace specializes in ice types, so we lead with Lucario against her Snover, and we smack this thing with an Aura Sphere on the first turn, which takes it out in one shot. Next, she sends in her Sneasel, who outspeeds us and uses Dig, so we swap in Buddy. The next turn, we tank the Dig, and then we take out her Sneasel with a Giga Drain. From here, she sends in her Metacham, which we also outspeed, and one shot with the Giga Drain as well. Finally, she's down to just her Ace Obama Snow, and it's still hailing, so we know it's going to use Blizzard. So we bring in Spiritomb to tank the hit. Spiritomb ends up getting a little bit too too low though, so we have to swap in Melodic to tank the next Blizzard. From here, we bring Buddy back in to bait another Blizzard, then immediately swap back to Melodic. We avoid the Blizzard on the next turn, then fire off an Ice Beam, which does minimal damage, and get smacked by a Giga Drain, which leaves Melodic extremely low. From here, we swap back and forth between Melodic and Buddy until Obama Snow is out of Blizzard PP. Then we bring Buddy back in, and it's able to take out the Obama Snow with a few Shadow Balls. And that's seven gems down. With Candace defeated, we think that the Gibbles down in the underground should be in heat and ready to spawn. So we head down there and wrangle the final member of our team, which we catch and nickname Chompy. Now we head back to Veilstone City to infiltrate the Team Galactic headquarters and put a stop to their evil plans once and for all. Unfortunately, Cyrus is able to get away just before we can stop him, but he does slip up a little bit. I'm off to Mount Coronet, that's correct. Mount Coronet, where you and I first met. You know, by that place that used to be a Denny's. Okay, so you're gonna wanna take a right on Route 207. If you hit Route 208, you've gone too far. All right, Cyrus, we know where the giant mountain in the middle of the region is. Anyway, we head to Mount Coronet, and yet again, we're too late to stop him, but the lake Pokemon bail us out, and then we have an ultimate battle against the evil man himself. We lead with our Gastrodon against his Honchkrow, and we're able to take it out with a couple ice beams while taking minimal damage. From here, he sends in his Gyarados, which uses Waterfall on the first turn after it comes in, which we absorb, and that boosts our special attack because of Gastrodon's ability Storm Drain. From here we go for a recover, then trade Ice Beams and recovers for Crunches and Earthquakes until the Gyarados finally goes down. Next up, he sends in his Weavile. So we bring in Luca, but unfortunately the Weavile goes for a Dig, so we swap to Spiritomb. It keeps using Dig, so we take the opportunity to set up a couple Nasty Pots and take it out over time with Shadow Ball. Finally, he sends in his Golbat, so we bring Lucario back in and trade a couple Air Cutters for Psychics until it goes down. With Cyrus defeated, we take one look at this legend Pokemon, then nope out of there because we really don't want to mess with a literal god. Now that the world is thoroughly saved, we're free to head to Sunny Shore City and take on the eighth and final gym leader. The last gym leader, Volkner, specializes in electric types, and he used to be a real gimme back in the day, but with his upgraded items and better movesets, he became one of the tougher gyms in this game. Fortunately for us, just before this battle, our Gabite evolved into a Garchomp, so obviously we lead with that against Volkner's Raichu. On the first turn, we outspeed it and take it out with one Earthquake, even through its Shukaberry. Next, he sends in his Octillery, which easily goes down to a single Earthquake. From here, he sends in his Ambipom, which hits us with a Fake Out and a double hit, but goes down to a single Earthquake as well. Finally, he's down to just his Ace Luxray, and while we're pretty sure we should outspeed it, we don't want to take any chances here because it does have Ice Fang, which would definitely destroy Garchomp. So we bring in Gastrodon, which is able to take this thing out with a couple Earth Powers. With all eight Gym Badges in our pocket, we make our way to Victory Road, and while fighting our way through, we have an unlikely encounter. Son? Dad? Oh, dear God. Uh, 
Moving on, we head in to challenge the Elite Four. But of course, like the annoying little man he is, just before we head in, Barry needs to get a battle in. And at this point, his team is extremely upgraded, and it's actually one of the hardest fights in this game. He leads with a Straptor, so we lead with Melodic and hit it with an Ice Beam on the first turn. Unfortunately, it lives because it's holding a Focus Sash, so we take a pretty big chunk of damage from close combat, but we finish it off on the next turn. Next, he sends in his Rose Raid, which we outspeed and take out with a single ice beam. At this point, Barry brings in his ace Infernape, and we really don't want to risk dying to a close combat, so we swap to Spiritomb. We trade a few Shadow Balls for Flame Wheels and eventually take it out. Next up is his Floatzel, so we swap to Roserade and take it out with a Giga Drain. His second to last Mon is Snorlax, so we bring in Garchomp to take advantage of its relatively low physical defense. After two Earthquakes, it goes down, but it does land a Yawn on Garchomp, so we end up falling asleep just after finishing it off. His final Pokemon is Heracross, and since Garchomp is asleep, we swap to Gastrodon. Unfortunately, on the turn we switch, it goes for a sword stance, which makes it super scary. The next turn, it thieves our leftovers, and we hit it with a surf, which does only about a third of its health. On the next turn, it uses another sword stance and doesn't quite go down to our second surf. Not wanting to risk potentially losing Gastrodon here, we swap to Lucario, who resists the thief, then finishes off the Heracross on the next turn with an extreme speed. From here, we finally head in to take on the Elite Four, starting with the bug type trainer, Aaron. This fight is pretty straightforward because of our secret weapon, Garchomp. We take out his lead Dustox with two Earthquakes, then he sends in Heracross. And this thing goes down to two Dragon Claws. Next up, his Beautifly goes down to a Rock Slide. Same with his Vespa Queen. And finally, he sends in his Ace Drapion, who goes down to a super effective Earthquake. With Aaron taken care of, we head in to challenge the ground type trainer, Bertha. First up is her lead Quagsire, who goes down to a four times effective Giga Drain from Roserade. Same with her next Pokemon, Whiskash, and her Pseudo Wudo. Her Golem does take two hits to go down since it has Sturdy, but eventually it gets taken out. But then her ace Hippodon goes down just the same as everyone else. With Bertha beaten, we head in to take on the fire type trainer, Flint. We leave with our Melodic against his Rapidash, and on the first turn, of course, the Rapidash lands a Hypnosis and puts Melodic to sleep, but eventually it wakes up to take out the Rapidash with a Surf. Next up, he sends in Steelix, who goes down to a single Surf. From here, he sends in his Buneary, so we bring in Gastrodon. We trade high jump kicks for Surf and heal with Recover until for some reason, he swaps it out to bring in his Drift Blim. We swap to Melodic, and his Drift Blim Baton passes a Minimize back to his Buneary. Knowing it's going to go for another high jump kick, we swap to Spiritomb, so it takes itself out with the recoil from missing the high jump kick. From here, he brings his Drift Blim back in, and he proceeds to miss two Will-O-Wisps while we hit him with a Dark Pulse and then land a Shadow Ball to finish it off. Now, all that's left is his Ace Infernape. We hit a couple Shadow Balls on it until Flint uses a Full Restore. At this point, we're too low to stay in, so we swap to Gastrodon, who triggers his Infernape's Focus Sash with an Earth Power, but in the process, we take big damage from close combat. We're worried about losing Gastrodon to another close combat, so we swap in Garchomp, who tanks two close combats and finally finishes this thing off with an Earthquake. Now, we just have one trainer left before the battle of the century. The last trainer in our way is Lucian, who specializes in Psychic types. We lead with Roserade against his Mr. Mime. On the first turn, we almost take it out with a Shadow Ball, but unfortunately, it lives and is able to set up a Light Screen. It does go down to a Shadow Ball on the following turn, but that light screen is troublesome. Next up, he brings in his Alakazam, who is extremely scary. So we swap to Spiritomb. It gets a nasty plot off, and we go for Dark Pulse, which does not do nearly enough damage because of that pesky light screen. This thing is now in prime sweeping position, so we go for a Hail Mary Sucker Punch and bank on it taking it out, which thankfully it does, we dodged a big bullet with that one. Next up is his Giraffe Rig, who goes down to a couple Sucker Punches. Then he sends in his Metacham, which we take out with a Misclick Dark Pulse, followed by a super effective Shadow Ball on the next turn. Finally, he's down to just his Ace Bronzong, so we bring in Gastrodon to wall this thing out with her cover, and we take it out over the next 10 or so turns with Surf. With all four members of the Elite Four down, we head into this Spider-Man meme of a final battle. I feel like there's some kind of metaphor here with beating yourself or something, but I'm not smart enough to make it up. Anyway, we challenge the champion, Cynthia, and she leads with Spiritomb, so we lead with Roserade, which before this battle, we had taught Dazzling Gleam. Our first Dazzling Gleam isn't quite enough to take out the Spiritomb, so we end up having to tank a super effective Psychic, but we are able to live and finish it off on the next turn. Next up, she sends in her Melodic, which we know has Miracle, and 
we know we can't one-shot this thing with Giga Drain from full health. So we decided to go for a synthesis to scout out what move it's going to use. Thankfully, we didn't attack because it does go for Mirror Coat. At this point, we end up swapping in our own Melodic to tank whatever it throws at us, which ends up being an Ice Beam. We know because it has Flame Orb to burn itself, eventually we will win this Mirror Match. We do get burned by Scald on the next turn, but luckily, Cynthia chickens out first and brings in her Roserade. From here, we swap to Lucario, tank a Dazzling Gleam, and then take it out with a Psychic. Next, she sends in her Gastrodon, so we swap back to Buddy and take it out with a Giga Drain. At this point, she sends in her Melodic, and fearing a Mirror Coat, we go for a Growth. It does go for an Ice Beam, but we live, then hit it with the Giga Drain, which finishes it off on the next turn. Next up, she sends in her Lucario, who comes in and gets off a Nasty Plot, then tanks a Dazzling Gleam. Thankfully, on the next turn, it goes for a Flash Cannon, which we avoid with the Power of Friendship, and then we finish it off with another Dazzling Gleam. Now, she's down to just her Ace Garchomp. We don't want this thing to get away with a free sword stance, so we go for a Dazzling Gleam just in case. It does hit us with an Earthquake, but somehow we manage to live and we smack it with a Dazzling Gleam, which just barely doesn't take it out. Over the next four turns, we go for four Dazzling Gleams as Cynthia uses all her full restores. Unfortunately, we end up running out of PP, so we have to use Giga Drain, which doesn't do nearly as much damage. Then, unfortunately, Roserade finally goes down to an Earthquake. You did a lot of work, buddy. Next, we send in our own Garchomp, and despite our hasty nature, we are unable to outspeed our arch nemesis, and we end up losing Garchomp to a critical Dragon Claw. RIP to a real one. With our back against the wall, we send in our own Melodic, who manages to tank an Earthquake and land a four times effective Ice Beam, which finishes this menace off. And with that, we have officially become the champion of the Elite Four and proven once and for all that you can in fact beat Pokemon Brilliant Diamond playing as Cynthia. Thanks for watching, till next time.